<laughs> Gotta be all right. Me. Oh yeah, no. So it's it's your boy. We're back again with the BFF with my boy Nathaniel Covington. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> and old Natty Light. Uh, this 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 man's. He's always talking about this one beer, and he always drinks it. So I was like, how about you come on this? This show and we talk about it a little bit. It's that Elysian Space Dust IPA. So this shit, I don't know. I don't know why. All right, let's just get into it real quick though. Why? Why this beer? Why is this the one that you're is your go to? It's such a high ABV, and it's like it's not chill. Like it's it's straight to the point. Like why is this the one? Um. Yeah. I don't really know. IPAs have always been the thing that I've enjoyed. I think when mm-hmm. I just, I didn't have a single beer until I was 21. Oof. And this random like pro, he wrote for Bacon Skateboards. I can't remember his name now, but he bought me my first beer. He took me to Hooters and ha- made me drink a PBR. And I was just like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> I don't think I drank any beer again Bacon. until I was probably 22 or 23. Really? Yeah, then I was all about uh, or I drink PBR if someone offered me one, I'd have that. Uh, okay. Or I would drink stouts, and then I got really mm. sick from the beer named Sue because I drank like they're like this big or something. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Huge. I didn't even, <laughs> and it just made me not like. I didn't have a hangover or anything. Honestly, as a beer drinker, I'm very a casual beer drinker, as you know, and I mm-hmm. never had a hangover. But that beer like just made me sick to my stomach. Um, yeah drinking beer at all i was you know off of it again like i don't want anything to do with this and then i had an ipa and i honestly don't is this too loud back here i can't hear it at all okay great um so <laughs> then someone offered me an ipa and i was like what are these things all about and like every one that i tried i liked but <clears throat> then i had the space dust, <laughs> space dust. <laughs> i don't That's remember fine. where the first time i had it i don't know remember where it was um yeah but I started to notice that it was like a really good one. You know, it has a high alcohol content, I think it's eight, 8%, 8.5 yeah. or something like that. Uh, eight, eight, two. Yeah. yeah eight, two. Dude, it's, I mean, it's a lot. You don't need any of them. Um, and someone that drinks casually and everything, I, you know, I only yeah. drink, you have one. You, you don't need more than two, or you might put yourself <laughs> in a spot. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, you, you, you might be a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, mean, I noticed, good. like, I noticed it was a good measuring stick for like as far as like the ones that had the higher alcohol alcohol content for me seem to always be really good. They've always mm-hmm. been good. Every single one of them that hit that mark of like seven yeah. percent are always really tasty. One makes you just feel like a little warm and, and fuzzy inside, and nice. <laughs> and it, it hits the spot. You know, you have that with like a slice of pizza or a burger, and it's just really good. But I remember specifically back to the original, uh, uh, my partner, Irene, her, her brother, Ronnie, uh, moved here in 2019. So it hadn't been, I haven't really been drinking this specific one for a super long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 2019 he moved here and yeah. I was preparing for my first art show. And our thing was get space dust. I'd work on art and we'd watch Joe Bob Briggs and just kind of kick it. And so it's like a very short minded nostalgia thing. But every time I have one, I just like can feel those vibes and it just makes me feel really good. I don't know. That's what's up. See, that's the whole, that's the idea of this is like this particular show, <clears throat> mainly because I've noticed like some people, man, I'm delayed as shit, huh? <laughs> so weird. Yeah. yeah. Get too um, on back there. What do you got? Nintendo DS. Nintendo- <laughs> uh, it, I'll I'll show you. <laughs> it, it's it's a lot. And, but no, uh, yeah, no. I've noticed a lot of people. They have like a a specific beer that uh, kind of. I don't know why, but like people tend to like buy the same shit over and over and over. And for me, like a person who likes to try everything, it's kind of like, all right, well if I'm going to hang out with so-and-so they're going to have probably have this, or if I'm bringing something special, like I'll like, you can, they, somebody loves this thing. Like I know that they'll probably like this, you know? Yeah. So 
I don't know. It's been it, this particular one. I don't. I don't know if you know, but like uh, Malaysians out of Seattle, Washington. Oh yeah. This thing is uh, there. This is an, a year-round beer for them, and it's like. I don't know. You might like a lot of stuff. So this has a uh, Citra hops in it, Amarillo and uh, Chinook. Uh, so, so those three, but year round. Yeah. 8.2. It says light to medium body IPA. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. all checks out. But Citra hops, I think there's, there's a lot of shit around town here in Nashville that I think you'd like that uses the same kind of shit. Is, but are you drinking the space dust right now? Is that what you have? Or are you coming a different one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. So have you looked at there? You know, obviously, I'm a Halloween guy. Yeah. And I love this beer. And I had no idea this past year. I was like, man, I got to find something other than, what is it? Uh, Black something brewery. I'm blanking on their names. Black Abbey? Uh, no. Blackstone. <laughs> Blackstone. <laughs> okay. Blackstone makes like probably one of the, the premium uh pumpkin beers that everybody gets everywhere like their pumpkin ales like one yeah. of the ones you always find everywhere and i was like man i wonder if there's just like some other ones that are more my level of the beefy spectrum. yeah dude a lesion has the halloween pack that is there's a there's a punkachino ale there's oh like God. wolf beer uh what is the other one I have three of them left in my fridge that i'm holding on to just for when i want to carve something that's sitting back here and just you know watch a horror movie but yeah oh my gosh, they have the best lineup of of pumpkin beers too so this this company knows what they're doing no they definitely do and um, they've been around for a hot minute i think like what 96 or some shit like it's been it's been a while two maybe 2006 i don't know i just looked at it <clears throat> but anyways um they also they have a, a dope variety pack with their other shit in it they have a contact haze hazy ipa and then they have that uh me and you tried their day glow IPA for the first time together. That was cool. Yeah. And uh, what else they got? Oh yeah, the super fuzz, the blood orange. That one's uh, good. Yeah, that one's cool too. But the the contact taste, the super fuzz, and the and this the space test coming a a twelve pack variety pack, which oh. is at the store. And that's see that that's why I bought this, and I was like, oh shit! You started this new segment show, and I was like, man. I have this in the fridge. Like I'll just save two, and uh, we'll do the show with Nathaniel because this is your shit. So I don't know. <laughs> you think of the contact haze. I like. I've started to like that one a little bit too because I think it's like five point six, slightly lower. Uh, well, let's look. I'm on their website right now, so. And you don't, you know, you don't have to go to sleep afterwards. <laughs> yeah, six six point oh. So still in that like. I feel like your 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 tolerance is probably like a six to an eight point five, to a, to where it's like it tastes good to you, considering yeah. what you considering that you like this so much. But it's like it's crazy. Out of everybody that I've talked to about their beer, you know their 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 BFF, um, <laughs> this is by far the the heaviest beer that anybody's picked. Really, Man. yeah. Which is kind of conf- it's, it's kind of funny because of just I don't know, uh, just you're not a big dude, so it's like <laughs> taking this is the this is like your regular thing, is is kind of kind of rad, but it's like well, you know I don't have more than one or two though I keep it pretty light. I mean even yeah. if I was to drink lighter beers in that category, I still like I don't I don't ever go past one or two. Yeah. Um, and so obviously when I drink one of these, you can get a six pack and that's going to last you a week. Or wow. Two, oh yeah. All the time. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. No, it, it's kind of funny. Like when I get these variety packs, like sometimes when I, when I get this one particularly, um, I tend to like buy the 12 pack one and then it lasts like all I drink one and I'm like, Oh man, you like, I like this, but I don't want to like blow through this 12 pack. So I'm just going to like, I'll select them. I'm going to like drink some other shit in between, but <laughs> I don't know. Like this one out of all variety packs that you can buy at a store. I mean, this is available everywhere. So it, that's kind of cool too. But out of all of them, you can buy at a store. This one is this is pretty fucking good. Like if you're going to, if you're going to buy a variety pack of beers. Yeah. I mean that they're that and they're like seasonal 
Halloween pack are hands down two of the best. It's like no matter what, yeah, their seasonal pack you can't just get anywhere. You like no. have to get it. But luckily, their seasonal or the uh, that normal pack and Space Dust are just like a walking distance to Target from me. And then oh yeah, is Mr. Whiskers, which is one of the best. Like it's a good like a store in town. Yeah, yeah. IPA it, session is like sixty feet long, dude. It's it's, it's, it's legit. Yeah. yeah. There's um, yeah. Shout out to them, but uh, Mount Juliet Beer Company is the place I've been going to to get um, a lot of like, not seasonal shit, but like, all right. So if I don't want to go to like a brewery, like um, like a bearded iris or something, because it's not that close to me, so they get everything they put out, which is like, and it's right down the road. So I'm like, why not? You know? Yeah. Even though it, I mean, in it's cool. They, I mean, they, they post their new releases and shit, so it's like, it's legit. But enough about the beers. <laughs> uh, me and Natty Light uh, fucking met at the skate shop. So I applied for a job when I first got here, and I had just blown out my ankle. So that was fun. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, dude, that was probably... <sighs> I don't know. We come from an era of skateboarders, I think, that were like being called a poser was a was a thing, you know, like oh, that yeah. was legit. Like you did not want to get called out and le- and applying to work at a skate shop with a busted ankle. <laughs> it, there is nothing more that, that makes you feel like a poser more than that. Like you can't even ride around saying like, yeah, I skate, you know, I can't, I can do this. And like, at the time I literally couldn't put any pressure on it. So it was like, <laughs> dude, most nerve wracking thing walking in and talking to you about it. Be like, Oh yeah. Cause we'd never met, you know? Yeah. I think hey, I just emailed you out of the blue. You're so was Dane there before you? Barely. Okay. You were the first two and you are still, I'm currently like, we're about to hire some new people. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot of people that haven't been there before in some capacity and like hung out a little bit that really ever apply. It's a very, like you said, it's very, uh, it's just like scary to like, no matter if you are like two days into skateboarding or 20 years into skateboarding, yeah. to move to a new city or just be in your own city and never really been a part of a, a scene before and just be like, <clears throat> yeah, you don't love to work here. It's very scary to do that. Uh, and at mm. the time, still to this day, even when I like people that have reached out about like wa- wanting to work there, it's almost I know them somehow through somebody. But both you guys, solid dudes, you know, I, like knew from the get go. And then <laughs> obviously, the way you handled yourself and like the the knowledge of skateboarding, and then just like telling kids how it is and telling them like about oh, yeah. everything. It was just like there was no doubt. I, I knew. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah so i mean shout out to six Ave. um it's kind of it's kind of dope because like you know like what you said moving to a new city is is fucking stressful being a skateboarder because like man you're like you're in your scene you know when you're growing up or whatever you have your crew of dudes or, or whoever you're skating with and then like shit i moved to la for a long time and then was like pretty much Dude, I don't know about it. Unless you're in the, in the fucking industry, in the skateboarding industry out there, you're probably not skating all the time. Or if you're like, unless you're like young enough, you know, to where you can just skate all day. You don't have any fucking responsibilities or whatever. But moving out of that is like, shit, man. I want to get back into this and like actually skate all the time and whatever. But I mean, that, that might have been... I've done some interviews in my time, but that might have been like the most nervous I was at about one, which is kind of stupid. But like at the same time, I was like, fuck, man, this would be sick. And like I didn't have shit. I didn't know what I was going to do here. So fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> well, how bad did I? I I've uh, talked to you about this recently. How bad did I seem as the interviewer, though? Because if people that obviously don't know me that are listening, if they li- that are listening to this will be like, yeah. Dude, I've had three jobs my whole life. Food giant, I didn't have to go through an interview. Family business, no interview. 
and they needed someone so bad at Sixth Ave and that he had already and Kyle Sloan at the time had already known me for about six months and he was just like, hey, I need you to work here. And so I just filled the paperwork out and started. Yeah. So I've never interviewed anybody, but I've interviewed people and I always just am like before I start like, hey, it's probably going to seem very casual to you. I don't know what how many other jobs you've had or whatever, but like, mm-hmm. uh, you well, know. I've never been interviewed, so I'm just going to kind of, I'm winging it most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, we, I think, all right, I'll give you an honest opinion. So I've done a, I've done a shit ton of interviews in my life. So because being in the film industry, you, that's all you do is you're, you just go in, you're fucking doing emails or, or you're going to an interview if it's like a bigger, uh, heavier job with more responsibility, but so I've done it a lot and it's like, sometimes it's fucking scary. You know, you like, sometimes they call you on like, uh, and, into some location and you have to go through security and they have your name on a list and like, it's weird. Right. Yeah. So in this particular situation, the only thing that was like, I don't know, it was way, it was way more chill, but like at the same time, it goes back to just skateboarding in general. Like when you see somebody, I guess around you, you kind of, especially in our time, yeah, you kind of, you kind of size them up. You're like, <laughs> yo, what's, what's up with this guy? You know, like, um, and especially, I mean, especially if you like met up at a spot or something and you saw somebody like skating, you're like, huh, you might not even talk to him for like 20 minutes. You're just like, Oh, let's see what this guy's got. <laughs> and then, then we'll be chill. But like, I don't know. At the time, I was like, I think I'll walk in and just say, fuck it. I'm just going to lay it out like how it is. And I think that worked just in general because like, I don't know. I had another job like I had another job, but it was I think not started yet or something. I don't know what the situation was. I don't know, but uh, I wasn't too worried about it. I think that was, I think that was the thing, but at the same time, I was like, this would be dope. And you definitely hit me with some, like some questions I was like, not expecting. So I was like, all right, cool. I mean, there's a lot about that place you don't expect. You know I mean? You gotta, you're running the gamut, you know, you got stuff to work there, but also, I mean, that's what I like pretty much, for my memory, that's that's been a while. I mean, 2020 alone makes everything seem like 15 extra right. years. But I remember you coming in and just being, you, like you're saying, very just like loose and just putting it out there, being mm-hmm. very real, <clears throat> excuse me, and just being open. And I was like, that was immediately what I what I like. Um, yeah. You know, some people just, you feel like skateboarding helps this. You, you can kind of get, a grip on people somewhat um yeah just being around a lot of people just at face value if they if they're just if they're putting up some kind of facade or not or whatever but you were just spoke very plain honest open blunt about stuff and i was just like yo this is automatically yes let's let's just (laughs) go down yeah Yeah, it's cool i mean and shit if 2020 didn't happen i'd fucking probably still be pulling some weekends from you but hey and i can say dude (laughs) so while you worked the last saturday before we closed and i remember you saying we're coming up on it dude you realize we're three days before before the skate park like closed down so the 16th oh shit no and i had to cancel we had to cancel spring break camps and the 17th we literally closed the doors Dude, I remember that Saturday before me and you talking and even like you worked like the Friday and Saturday and you're like, yo, man, this stuff is real. It's coming. It's coming. And I was like, I believed you. And I was like, yeah, I, I feel like it's going to come soon. But I was, I didn't think it was that soon. And then that Sunday, I was just like, oh, wow. Pat's like, he's got it figured out. Because you're already like, you maybe you don't need to put me on the schedule next week. I think I'm going <laughs> to just lay low for a bit. And yeah. Then, boom you know we're all at home yeah. i was at home at least until june so yeah i remember telling some of the boys i remember one of the kids came in and they were like yo my brother um he had to fly back like from school he was like in school in new york 
Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, well, I don't even want to drop any other name. But, <laughs> but I was like, yo, uh, they, they, they were like, oh, we're going to go get him from the airport. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, you guys coming back? And they were like, yeah, we're coming back. I was like, cool. Well, you guys aren't going to touch anything when you get back in this bitch. <laughs> and they were like, what do you mean? I'm like, bro, this shit is not not serious like this shit is serious as fuck right now and he's like nah bro it's good it's good i'm like nah bro the world's about to get fucked (laughs) and he's like uh he didn't believe me at all but whatever it's a kid so yeah i mean and then i do everything you know me and uh we'll just say our neighbors do everything we we do everything right by the book stay at home right before we reopen covid I'm Boom. Sick. It yeah. took me like five months to get normal. Bruh. Never. Yeah, knock, knock on wood. I haven't even ever had to get a test. So uh, I've had, I've been tested many times more for just like, just to make sure Obviously yeah. the one because I, I was really sick, but yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. You never know. Oh, it is insane. I mean, it's, it's wild that it's been a year of this shit, but like, I mean, bring it back to it. It's it, shit right now. Like it's getting it's getting warm out again. You know, we might have to we might have some summer fires. You know what I'm saying? Bring some of these out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that that would be nice. I mean, I got this. Bro, I don't even know. It's I don't even know. It's 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 kind of nuts. Like. <laughs> a year a year a fucking year what was the what was the best the best new beer that you found in that year time oh shit uh actually there it's um all right so i don't know best but like there's one a local one that really surprised me and i was like oh shit and, <laughs> and it is from southern grist um yeah they do a whole bunch of weird beers like really weird shit so this past year there was a big boom in like using lactose in beers yeah yeah big boom in it like it was it was weird there's a bunch of shit like creamy fucking strawberry ales and stuff like it was it was wild like lots of shit that tastes like wine honestly Hmm. and so uh, I think it was around it was sometime in this last late last summer, I think. And I had it on um a happy hour episode. And I was faded, like go on. <laughs> and uh had it and I was like, oh shit, like this thing is fire. Like I, it was like it's called like red, white, and something. And I think they do it like seasonally, but Bro, I was like, I was super surprised. I was like, this shit is pretty banging. Like, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I never seen it again after that. Man. Like that one oh. can. Oh. Yeah. I, I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, but find something like that, and then it's just gone. And it, yeah. it's find it again. There's this one beer. Um, I think I'm gonna do for my episode of this. Like, I'm gonna have Drew interview me for for this. And it's this beer that I know he doesn't like. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> but it's like this one, it's called Cronenberg 1664 Blanc. All right. You Not can. David Cronenberg, I'm sure, right? It has nothing to do with the, with the director. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. It, it, it comes. So there's two, two, two versions of it. It's a French beer. And Cronenberg is basically like the Budweiser of France, right? Oh, okay. But um, their Blanc comes in a blue bottle, and it is a white ale with spices. Think, think a, a chicory coffee, but a beer. Whoa. Yeah. I and it, it. Yeah, I think you'd fuck with it. You, it might. They might have it at Mr. Whiskers. All right. You should check it out. It, it's it comes in a it's a blue bottle. Like it, it come in a six pack if they have it. If they have it, they're not gonna have that many of it. Like for sure. I just saw it at my local uh, liquor store around the corner, and I was like, "Oh shit!" 
I might have to get this because I can never find it. And it's like, I have this wild story about when I first had it. And uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you real quick. So <laughs> uh, basically, I was on this show in Vegas and we had we'd gotten done and we we're wrapping up and whatever. And the people left that were wrapping were like, hey, let's go to a fancy dinner at this at the hotel we're staying at. We we're staying in the Palms. And we're, I was like, all right, cool. You yeah, know, I'm down. Like production's paying for it. Fuck it. Like whatever, let's go. And uh, so we go and they were like, I was like, well, what? I'm not really feeling any of these cocktails you guys got on like the, this is our cocktail of the day or whatever. I was like, do you guys have any beers? And they were like, actually we have this import. And like we, it's like for a limited time, this is like our special beer of the month or something. I was like, all right, what's that? And they bring it out. I was like, fuck it. I don't care what it is. Just bring it. And um, they bring it. And it's this blue bottle. And they, they, you know, they did it all fancy. They poured it in a glass for me and shit. So I was like, oh, shit. Okay. And really liked it. I ended up killing like a whole six pack at that dinner. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was great. Oh but, um, but then I was like, I knew what it was. So I was like, all right, well. I need to find this. Like, I need to have this regularly. And I could not find that beer for an entire year. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And guess where it was? Fucking around the corner at the gas station I never go to. That's how it works. Oh. Straight up. And it wasn't even a gas station. It was like this little, like, liquor store, beer shop thing that was, like, next to a flower shop. Yeah. And... They like sold old porno mags and like weird and like porno mags and ice cream. Like they had an ice cream section. I was like, what is this store? Like you never, never came to get it. Like, why do they have that? You never asked them about that? Well, I asked them. I was like, oh, yo, how long have you had this in here? And there we go. Oh, we've always had it. No one, no one's bought it. And I was like, <laughs> Your old beer, 10 year old beer. I was like, bro, this shit has been in here forever. And yeah. like. I could have just walked her down the street and got it. Like, oh my gosh, that's so good. Some bullshit. I was pissed. <laughs> but it, yeah, that was that was the beer for me. I, I think I'm, I probably have a picture of it. I'll send it to you. But fuck, man. Do you have anything else to say about this this beauty, this cloudy boy? Before um, we go on this one. Well, oh, before we stop recording, I'll talk to you for a little bit after you know. I, I, just, I mean, it's it's probably one of still like in top five for me. I have found other ones that I enjoy, but I don't have it as often because if I have like more, like you can't really drink more than two, or you're just not even like not met, like not that you'll be messed up, you'll just like have a headache from simply just like having too much of it. You know what I mean? Sure. I don't know. No, but <laughs> no. what do you have more than that? You drink more than I mean. I have. I'm. These are done. Like this oh, is gosh. this is it of that second one. So like. Yeah. Um. But I mean, for I mean, it's. I when I say nostalgia, it's only been like two years. I guess 2019 to 2021. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's like a place marker in my life for just a very 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 enjoyable time. Just because. Yeah. It was a 2019 was one of the best years that I've ever had. Um, mm -hmm. Just with Irene, her brother moving here and forming a, like a, a great friendship, family relationship with him. Um, yeah. You just like work on art stuff. We we like, you know, you were working at the park then. It was just like, it was that legit. Was like amazing year and skateboarding, just everything. We got to yeah. like enjoy something before enjoying nothing, you know, in quotations. Cause I mean, there's probably some parts of 2020 we all, all took away as like being great for us oh yeah having experience but 2019 was like the the year of like got to take a deep breath and really for me really enjoy life before having to like tighten down for a period of time and just like yeah be a little worried about life and family and friends and what's yeah. it and so i get to now in the rear view mirror <laughs> look like that and this beer definitely was every time i drink it was like it's just like, oh, that was such a good time. Yeah. You know, I don't know what, like, or so I associate, I know everyone does this, but um, 
I associate certain things with certain people and like even even music and you know everyone does this but like even music or albums or for me um in the last what, fucking six years i guess since i've been doing quick sixer stuff um beer so i, I noticed what people drink so yeah uh, this this thing i i'd had this beer before you before i met you mm. but i don't think i'll ever not associate it with you like from now on like or from from a while until on <laughs> but that's sick though I, I mean even when like when i when i'm at a nashville and like when i've moved on from this section of my life i think this will this beer will always bring me back to working in the shop kicking it with you guys yeah and you know like it's just it, it'll be a good a good memory beer like every time I decided to get a little dusted, you know what I'm saying? I love, see, you said it too. I was going to say, like, <laughs> it's like you know, you can, like in skateboarding, people say, dude's been dusted. Like, I've heard people use that term for getting just like worked trying a mm-hmm. trick. Like, if you're not careful, I'm thankful I've never been dusted, but it will, it'll, it can get you. We'll like, sneak it on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, don't dip out, but I'm going to close out this thing. Okay. So, um, you know, I got I got to thank you again for coming on here. You know, Nathaniel Covington, if you ever uh, come through Nashville, go ahead and check out Sixth Avenue. Uh, there, are you guys? We're the only fucking shop in the city now, huh? For now, it sounds like there might be some more, but only one for now. The only <laughs> shop in the city. You know, eighteen years running. You know, what I'm saying, none <laughs> of you bitches got that shit. So, thanks again. Go and check out some Space Dust uh shout out to seattle we haven't had a seattle beer on a show yet i think sick which is kind of cool um kind of weird too honestly i feel like there's lots of shit happening in seattle though but anyway uh i appreciate you coming on here and talking about this beer now we're gonna close this shit out but me and you can talk a little bit (laughs) you know what i'm saying